Insects are one of the most overpowered factions in the game. With their incredible selection of powerful abilities, it's no surprise they've been the dominant force in the meta in basically every biome in the game. However, there is one subset of insects that really pushes the limits of what I think constitutes fair play in the game of life. I'm talking about Hymenoptera, the group consisting of bees, ants, and wasps. There are two factors that make this faction so powerful. The first is their incredible list of abilities, and the second is that their most famous strategy is basically an exploit of the game engine. This episode was sponsored by Curiosity Stream and Nebula. First, their abilities. Long story short, Hymenopterans have a dozen or so powerful abilities, some of which are plenty broken enough on their own, but when combined synergistically, they become ridiculously overpowered. We're gonna need to sort of rapid fire through this list just to keep this video reasonably paced. The first and most important ability of theirs is flight. Part of the reason that insects in general are a top tier class is that they have access to the flight ability. They were the first major class to gain access to this perk, unlocking it several expansions before reptiles, birds, and mammals. It's tough to overstate the utility that this ability provides, but I do have a whole video on it if you want to know more. One thing to note is that, while most flying builds had to modulate an entire pair of limbs in order to use this ability, insects did not. This gives insects, and especially Hymenopterans, access to ability combinations not seen anywhere else in the game. Next is Aposematic Coloration. Many Hymenopterans are brightly colored, which lowers their stealth stat and greatly buffs their passive intimidation. It's such a frightening defense that other builds have started to copy it. Next is Exoskeletal Armor. Despite all being in a very low weight class, Hymenopterans sport durable armor that allows them to greatly reduce damage from attacks. While not as sturdy as, say, the armor of a beetle, it's still surprisingly strong. In addition to granting them extra defense from attacks, this armor makes flight a lot less risky, as getting hit midair is nowhere near as big a death sentence as it is for other flyers. The ability to fly usually is only even remotely viable when the user makes a lot of sacrifices in terms of bulk and defense, but this doesn't seem to apply to insects. Next is their Venomous Sting. Despite being in a low weight class, pretty much every player needs to respect Hymenopterans as a threat. Their stings are powerful enough to completely paralyze other insect players, and deal serious damage to larger players. In a group, there's basically no weight class large enough to ignore their attacks. Even elephants fear beehives. But speaking of beehives, I think it's time I cut to the chase. Their most important ability is eusociality. This ability is completely busted and needs to be nerfed. At first glance, it might just look like normal team strategy, similar to cooperative hunting or herd behavior. But in truth, it goes so far beyond that. Eusocial insects are organized on a level that not even humans can contest. Despite not having a particularly high intelligence stat, a hive can build extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. They can launch organized attacks containing thousands of combatants. They can capture prisoners, cross major barriers, and control territory to an absolutely incredible degree. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. So you may be asking yourself, why does this work? Why is it that in a meta dictated almost entirely by survival of the fittest, would so many players act altruistically, donating all of their foraging efforts, spending time guarding respawn points, and even sacrificing themselves in combat? The answer is complicated and gets into the very core of the game's mechanics. Try to stick with me, it's not an easy explanation, but I'll do my best. First, I'll start with the question. What does it mean to win the game? Most players would answer, complete the game's main quest, reproduction. But why is that the primary objective? And what if there was a way to change the main objective of another player? So the main objective is determined by the way the characters in the game are coded. Data miners have discovered that most new players spawn in with half the code of each player that cooperated in the corresponding reproduction quest. Because a player's primary objective is determined by whatever method they have available to pass on the largest percentage of their own code, in most cases, this means a player's main goal will be mating and offspring rearing, because this results in 50% of their own code being passed on. Hymenopterans found a way to break this aspect of the game, and they did so using an ability called Arenatoki. Arenatoki is a really complicated ability. Pause the video here if you'd like to try and understand why this is busted before I tell you. The relevant bit is that the daughters of a queen are semi-clones of each other. They still share 50% of their code with their mother and 50% with their father, but they share 75%
with each other. This completely breaks the game. Because of the fact that if one of these daughters wanted to produce its own offspring, it would only share 50% of its code, their primary objective actually switches from reproduce to assist the queen in reproduction as much as possible. Because in assisting the queen in hatching more sisters, each sister is actually passing on 25% more of their genetic code than they would if they were to simply reproduce conventionally on their own. In practice, this means workers are more loyal to the queen than they are to themselves, and will act against their own self-interest if it means giving the queen the resources or opportunity to hatch more sisters. This is a blatant exploit of the game's code system, and it undoubtedly leads to some of the most powerful strategies in the game. It essentially changes the game from being an action RPG to being an RTS. Let's talk about some of the more overtly OP types of strategies achievable through Yu Sociality. The most obvious is that these players take coordinated attacks to the next level. They can take down players of radically larger sizes than themselves. Even among the largest players in the game, there is very little that can withstand a full-on assault by an entire colony. Coordination also lends itself to the possibility of hyper-specialization. It's uncommon for members of the same species to have significantly different stats or abilities, since often these come with serious trade-offs. But when the colony can cover for your weaknesses, there's nothing preventing some members from specking purely into extreme offense or impenetrable defense, since even if these reduce your own foraging abilities, the colony can assist you. On the flip side though, the ability of Hymenopterans to generate food is also massively improved. Through the use social ability, strategies like food storage and even agriculture are unlocked. The best example of this is the leafcutter ant, which adopts a unique strategy of harvesting the leaves of plants in order to farm nutritious fungus but there are other ants which raise insect larvae as livestock. Other Hymenopterans store food in the form of honey, an XP-dense treasure so valuable that it's one of the few reasons another player may attempt an attack on a bee's nest. Yoink. These strategies all ensure highly stable sources of food, which mitigates the risk of a mass wipe in the event of famine, which is normally the main downside of sharing food. They're the reason colonies can endure winters where foraging is effectively halted. It's a really broken ability. One of the most impressive things these players can accomplish is their structures. Between the organization seen in beehives to the sheer massive size of a leafcutter ant colony, these bases put most other constructed nests to shame and protect those inside from basically any attack. You social insects are a fascinating faction of the player base. However, there is another equally fascinating faction of Hymenopterans, a faction whose strategy is so disturbingly brutal that I'm not comfortable risking having my video age-restricted on YouTube by showing it. See, I've made a whole companion video to this one all about parasitoid wasps, wasps which do crazy things like mind control and mummification of their enemies. But if you want to see it, you'll need to check out this video's sponsor, Nebula. Nebula is a place where YouTubers like myself upload things like bonus content, ad-free videos, and exclusive originals. It's owned and operated by creators for creators, and is a place where we don't have to fear restrictive policies like demonetization or age restriction. If you join us over on Nebula today, you'll not only get access to my Parasitoid Wasp companion video, but you'll also get early access to all of my videos, get access to my Nebula original series Let's Play Outside, get access to extended cuts of my Lizard and Bird tier list videos, and on top of all of that, you'll get the entire rest of the Nebula catalog from other top-tier creators, like Real Life Lore's Modern Conflict series or Real Engineering's Battle of Britain documentary. So how can you get access to all of this, you may ask? Well, Nebula is a proud partner of CuriosityStream, another amazing streaming service that I'm sure you've heard me sing the praises of before. It hosts some of my favorite nonfiction content I've ever seen, including amazing documentaries like Out of the Cradle and Amazing Dino World. If you sign up for CuriosityStream today, you'll get a free membership to Nebula as well. Not a free trial, but a free membership as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. Annual memberships start at only $14.79 a year, making this one of the absolute best deals in streaming, period. I've got a lot of fun stuff planned for Nebula this year, in addition to all the great stuff already on there, so I'd really love for you to check it out. You'll be supporting the channel when you do. I'd expect a lot of insect-related content this year on YouTube as well, so if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and tap the bell so you don't miss them when they drop. Hope you found this stuff as interesting as I did. Thanks for watching, and good luck out there.